Hi, everybody. My name is Jake Scutchmere from Nanorax. I'm going to walk you through um, how to do the heat transfer experiment. Um, so first, we'll go through the items. Uh, first, we have our breadboard here. Um, two 9-volt batteries. Our 30-gauge wire. Two battery snaps for the batteries. LED display, and then thermochromic pigment and glue. First things first, we're going to put the battery snaps on the batteries. So you just snap right on. Make sure the students don't uh, let these two wires stay in contact with each other because that's just going to short circuit the battery and cause the battery to heat up and lose its power. Do that for both batteries. Um, if your kit for your LED display, if it doesn't already have this installed, um, just go, go ahead and plug these two red wires into this port here. Um, you should have exactly six inches of wire. I need to cut mine own. With this, we're going to take the temperature probe um, and we're going to coil this wire around the probe. Your probe looks a little different than mine. That's okay, they operate the same. Make sure that we leave out uh, two prongs for these wires. Um, it takes a little bit of finagling to get the, uh, to get them to kind of stick out, but two prongs. Um, we're going to stick these into the breadboard in two different uh, rows. Um, so the breadboard has these numbers here. The way this works is um, everything in line in, so for example, row 15 here, all of these are in contact with each other and none of these going this direction are in contact. So um, if I had a wire here and a wire here, they're not connected. If I have a wire here and a wire here, they are connected. Um, anything across this channel is also not connected. So let's plug these wires into the breadboard. Next. It's going to be a little hard for me because I'm going to show you this at the same time. Next, we're going to take the red and the black wires of the LED. And plug them. It doesn't really matter where, but else it's just somewhere else on the breadboard, um, so they're not connected to the uh, wires that we just plugged in for the coil. Make sure they are also in two separate rows. See there, they're two separate. We have our. Other wires still plugged in the coiled wire. Um, we're going to take the battery and plug in red to red, black to black. Should see the temperature display come on. Um, I realize it's mirrored for you guys, but that's uh, I think 25. Yeah, 25.3 is what it's showing right now. Um, what we can do now is also, um, so this is the ambient temperature of the room is what this is going to show. The students should record that on their kit. Um, this part's optional, but it is kind of the, I mean, a visually cool thing of the experiment is um, a little bit of this thermochromic pigment. Blue. Um, 
And then, you know, the students can use a toothpick or something to mix this up. paint the uh, coil here with this pigment. Now, all it's going to do is uh, once it reaches its temperature, it will turn a different color. Uh, that's, that's too soon. Um, you should wait for that to dry. Uh, it's just Elmer's glue, so it should probably take like, I don't know, 10 to 15 minutes or something. Um, for the purposes of the video, I'm just going to proceed. But uh, if they if they decide to do that, they should definitely let it dry. Um, and then we're going to. So first, take note of the ambient temperature, which is going down right now because the glue is drying, but it'll go back up. Um, and plug in the other battery to the red. Uh, these ones, the colors don't really matter. All we're doing is completing a circuit here. Um, so one wire going to one of the coils that are inserted into the breadboard and the other wire going to the other coil that's in the breadboard. Um, and then we should start to see the temperature increase. Uh, depends on the contact and I'm looking at a mirrored <laughs> number, so it's hard to tell. Yes, OK, so it's going up right now. Um, yeah, and we will just uh, leave this go. Um, kind of hard to tell, but the uh, you can see the pigment is starting to change color also to a yellow. So keep your eye on that. And I'm just going to mute while this goes up. And once it hits 45 degrees, I'm going to um, unplug the wires, and then we would have the students record how quickly it takes to slow down. Um, so I, I guess I should have stated prior to all this the before plugging in this battery or the battery to the wire, the students should, you know, start their stopwatch and start recording with their phones, both the temperature of the uh, display as well as the um, time on the stopwatch. Uh, and then they can go back and write down those times and the temperatures associated with times. Um, or they could try to write it down as it's the experiments happening either or. Uh, as long as they're recording the temperature at the time that it occurred. We're at 28.4. I'm just going to mute and let this uh, heat up and, um, you know, you can skip forward uh, whenever you're watching the video. Um, but keep an eye on the thermochromatic pigment. Uh, also, um, a few things to note. We should instruct the students, and this is in the guides, to be careful, never touch the probe. Um, this is heating up. Uh, you know, if we stop it at 45 degrees, nobody can get nobody's going to get hurt at 45 degrees. But these batteries technically should have enough power if left on to uh, it could hit up to 100 degrees Celsius. So we just want to make sure that we are one instructing the students never to touch any of the hot components, which would be the probe. Um, and two, to never let this go above 45 degrees. As soon as it's 45, stop the experiment. Um, and I'll show you how to stop the experiment soon. Should say it'll um it'll likely go a little faster than this. So there's a couple things going against uh, the speed of the heating up rate right now. One is I've been using this battery for many experiments, so it's probably running low on power right now. So your battery should be fresh and heating up faster. Two, I didn't let the glue to dry, and you guys will whenever you do this experiment. Um, so that glue is just absorbing a lot of this heat right now to speed up really the drying process. So if the glue were dry, this would also heat up faster, um, just to let you know.
a couple notes on troubleshooting um while i just think of it so if we see the if we ever were to see that the um battery is not heating up um, that's really taking a long time here uh, in fact it looks like it's cooling down but that's probably because the uh battery's dying um anyway whoops if we see that the wire isn't heating up um you know the reason of that is generally because of poor contact um so for the current to flow you know these metal contacts need to be made sure that they're touching um so just check all the wires make sure there's a good connection make sure the coil is plugged in good um this one's having a hard time reaching 40 so i think i'm just going to pull the experiment but if this doesn't light up it's probably because the uh screens aren't on you know it's not having a good connection in the breadboard so just make sure that there's all good connections um you know in fact i think my battery might have just died uh, but anyway nominally this would um as soon as this hits 45 degrees the students would then um, pull these two wires uh, so they would remove the power that's being supplied to the temperature probe and then they would record um, the time and the temperature as this goes back to ambient which is going to be like 20 uh, you know 22 degrees or whatever they started with okay that's pretty much the gist of this experiment 